get a monster over yeah. there? Yeah. It's a 520 horsepower D10 bulldog. Big as a house. Our house? Yeah. Hey, now the workers must have left this old thermos behind. Pretty beat up. Still something in it. Yeah, Rose probably rotten steak. Oh, man, I gotta get a bigger thermos. <laughs> well, looks like I got two masters this time. Hard Hat Harry's the name, but some people call me the construction worker's genie. I'm Max. He's Alex. We're kids. Human being kids. You living here? Do now. First 5,000 years, I lived in an old lantern. But I created that in for this thermos. Oh, the outfit's changed a bit, too. Hmm, much better. You mean you're a real genie? I'm a Genie D. Lanter of wishes of all types. Nothing's too tough for hard hat Harry. As they say in Genie Land, your list is my command. How many wishes? But see, maybe I can throw in a couple extra. See the biggest, baddest, most awesomest construction equipment there is in the whole wide world. The bulldozer! Why didn't you say so? Mm, we might have to travel a bit. Are you boy? No! Oh! Well, then I'll just have to sprinkle you with some magic wrap. Here, you better put these hard hats on. And again. Okay, guys, close your eyes. Gravel and soil and stone. This is Hard Hat Harry, and I'm not alone. Max and Alex are here with me, and gigantic equipment is what they want to see. So give us the power to fly far, far away and show us the top. <laughs> but we got the big stuff, all right. Yeah, big hole. That hole's what's to build, Alex. And when it's done, a giant skyscraper will be built here. Big machines like bulldozers that dig up soil, rock, and sand are excavators. You can see the front push blade on this dozer and the specialer tracks or crawler treads that give a better traction and gripping power on dirt and mud. A bulldozer can do the work of hundreds of men in a lot less time. Cool, a big bucket full of That's called a treco stick. Actually, Max, your brother's partly right. That deep, upside-down shovel on a track hoe is called a bucket. It has long teeth on it to break up the ground. Watch how it digs upward toward the machine, then swings its big arm or it releases its load by tipping the bucket over the dumping point. It drives on track, so it works, right? Yeah, those wide, heavy tracks are slower than wheels, but by spreading the weight, they're more stable on mud and lose dirt. You know, boys, track hoes are also called back hoes. Because of the way the bucket pulls back, like a hoe, when it's digging, The track holes are passing dirt to each other. Give that man a lollipop. Exactly, Alex. The dirt part of the hole is brought to a higher point by the track hose. Then the top track hose swings its huge bucket all the way around and drops the load on. That enormous bucket can hold almost a ton of dirt. Look, the bucket's almost as big as the entire dump truck. Maybe it's the... Maybe. Who's calling me small? Who said that? Whoops, I forgot to tell you, boys. When you travel with me, lots of amazing things can happen. Like construction equipment can talk, even dump trucks. Yeah, I can talk. Now, who called me small? Was it you, Pipsqueak? Uh, sorry, Mr. Rock. Gotta watch what you say around here. Oh, he's just a little grouchy because he's been working so hard, Alex. Let's go over and see the truck bath. Truck bath? Big trucks have to go through a tire bath before they leave the construction site. That's so they won't drop rocks and chunks the roadway where they could damage cars. Safety is always the first concern on construction sites. Like we're not hard hats, Harry? That's right, Alex. Hey, put me down, put me down. Another piece of talking equipment? Ouch, I said, don't be a big bully. What a 
did you pick and sit on your own side? Looks like that tower crane torch somewhere it doesn't want to go. Wow, that tower crane can practically fly. It's more than 260 feet high, Alex. It takes a day just to erect the tower itself using other smaller cranes. That cross piece is called the runway. A trolley glides along its length, hoisting up to 16,000 pounds on steel cables. That's equal to the weight of eight African elephants. Okay, down, boy, down. Come over here and release these cables. Don't just stand there, do something. <laughs> hey, Harry, they're setting up the pile driver over there. What's a pile driver? Well, let's go see. Hey, Harry. Uh-oh. He's talking too. I'm Pete the Pile Driver. Let me tell you a little about myself. Uh, Pete? Oh, you're guiding my feet with the pile from moving around when I slam into it. Piles are long pieces of plate for foundation for big buildings and bridges. Are you part of a cross It's connected near the top of the crane's tall boom. Then the men put the pile under me and oh, that pile six inches at a time into hard rock. I'm one powerful dude. Be careful, mister. Don't hit him. He's just getting ready to remove the hoisting belt from the pile and pull the steel form clear. Then he'll set up another pile for me to watch. And happy hitting. I need time, Harry. And boys, if you want to clap something for you, just stop by. Pass me the help. Bye. Okay, guys, next stop, an auger driller. The auger driller will force the ground to the top. Looks like a big screw. That's the screw section of the drill bit, Max. And it's huge. Six. The straight part is called the shank. It turns around and around, connected to the main machine by strong grip. It's like Dad's hand drill at home, but a thousand times bigger. Yep. And look how the operator sits at the side where he can monitor the machine, work the controls, and watch the drilling all at the same time. Hey, here comes my favorite part. When the drill gets clogged up with crushed rock and dirt, the operator pulls it out of the hole, swings it to the side, and by reversing the direction of the drill, so it's clogged. Isn't that a sure, it's an instant reboot. A magic way. Then it's back into the hole where the auger can dig as far down as 60 feet deep. But we won't wait for that. Why don't the three of us go see a clam digger? Digs for clams? They just call it that, Alex, because the bucket opens up like a clam shell. What's it doing anyway? Looks like the clam digger is removing sand, silt, and mud from the access shaft of a tunnel. The ground that guide a big job into the center of the hole. The clam digger is attached to a crane, too. That's right, Max. Cranes have lots of uses on a construction site because they're so good at lifting heavy things to high places. Yeah, it really are such a useful tool. I have an idea. Let's go see some other ways that cranes are used on construction sites. Like here. Now that's when they get the My idea is that actually this clam digger is stretching out a channel for passing boats. Dredging? Hmm. That means it's making the river deeper so boats won't hit the bottom and it floats. Right, Matt. So the crane will be loaded with wet sand, silt, and debris until it's full. Then I will pull it to a place where the muddy mix can be dumped safely. Wow! Only a crane can put like that up to a tall bridge! You got that right, pal. Nothing like a crane for living in the morning. Me and my crane friends can do it all day long, and we never get it. Listen to None this. this. Sing it, boys!
strange looking bucket on that crate over there. Hey, you spotted a dragline bucket, Max. Sometimes big digging machines like that crane are just too heavy to travel over very wet or soft soil. Even with their wide track tread spreading the weight? Even so. You mean they could sink and disappear and never be seen again? I wouldn't go that far, Alex. But they might, and that would mean using other machines on the construction site to pull it out. Instead, they use a crane with a drag line to dig up the wet soil. The workers attach the enormous drag line bucket to the crane boom by a cable. Then the crane operator casts the bucket far out in front. Like fishing? Sort of like fishing, Alex. Then he reels the bucket in, letting it drag slowly along the cable line, gulping up dirt as it goes. The drag line is designed to fill itself as it's pulled across the ground. And when it's full, the crane man just lowers the front end and the bucket's empty. Boy, there's about a hundred ways you could use a crane. Hey guys, don't say anything mean about this bucket. Remember what happened the last time? <laughs> That's called an articulated dump truck because the cab part, where the driver is sitting, can move independently of the dump bed where the dirt is carried. It's easier for an articulated dump truck to maneuver over loose sand and difficult terrain like you see here. Let's watch it back up and dump its heavy load. I had a toy dump truck once just happened, but I dropped it in the river. You cried for hours. Hey, hey, get out with the dump truck. money a construction company can save. And that's why they bring a backhoe to all of every work site. That's will be back for another load of bacon. Do you know him already? No, not unless he's another construction genie. Well, looks like the dump truck and backhoe are finished working together for now. The backhoe's raising its bucket high into the air and creeping along on its steel track. I thought your little kids are calling. Mommy, where are you, Mommy? Hey, look over there, it's a baby front boat. Has anyone seen my mommy? Maybe if I wave my arm, you'll see me. Oh, Mommy, it's baby. I'm looking for you, Mommy. Over here, Mommy. Mommy has to move a big boat. yard bucket like mine and weigh as much as I do for the long time. But you'll have to practice maneuvering with your tires in your bucket first. Watch how mommy lifts and lowers her bucket and scoops up all the dirt. Cylinder arms that tilt my bucket. With gentle handling of those control levers, the driver can get me to reach way out and pull way back in on that packed soil. A quick turn to the side, and my bucket's empty. Using a light touch, I can even push big logs out of the way with my nose. Hey, I want to try that. Why don't you follow me across this mud puddle instead? My fat tires and deep treads 
I'll never get stuck. And each wheel operates independently. So my tire will the ground, and I'll still move forward. <laughs> That's a funny trick, cousin. Backhoe front loader machines like me are found on every construction site, because we're so versatile, fast, and maneuverable. Hey, you kids over there, want to climb into my driver's seat? All right, yeah! Driver's compartment or cab rotates in a complete circle, so the driver can use my bucket end or my shovel end in seconds. And just like the baby's mama, my front shovel can push or carry lots of dirt in one gulp. Whoops, looks like some real loose soil ahead. You kids better jump out. I might start spinning my wheel. Hey, let's go take a look at the forklift over there. Did you left the forks? <laughs> Uh-oh, nobody's driving that thing. The drivers on the other side have a steel cage that protects him from falling debris. Here he comes now. The driver moves the machine as close as he can. Then he extends or telescopes the long fork arm as much as 40 feet. The wooden planks are sitting on the two long forks, and the ground man uses hand signals to help the driver position the load. Gently now, fellas. Harry, I think the driver wants to talk to us. Gosh darn it, I just realized I forgot much. Let's get out of here. We don't want to hang around with a hungry construction worker on the loose. We can hide near those backhoes over there. Hey, boys, where'd you go? Oh, I turned my back in seconds and they're gone. Alex, Max, don't be running around here without me. Oh. I get the side. I get the vest. Aha, found you. Come on out of there, baby. Like I said before, if there's serious digging going on, you can be sure there's a backhoe nearby. And a monster dump truck, too. An off road dump truck in a book that had eight foot hydrants. It's true. Those are some of the biggest trucks on Earth, and three tons. They're not allowed to travel on highways because their heavy weight could crack the pavement. This one here has wheels as tall as you, Max, and a rear bed of a can hold tons, 6,000 pounds. And what he does is load that monster bulldozer comes in to make the ground flat and level for the builders. That's great. You've got some real smart brains under that hard hat. But can you guys tell me how wide that runs? As wide as a car? Close out, 12 feet across, and the dozer is its power. Hey, I have an idea. Let's go sit in the cab of that big bulldozer car. Can you drive this thing? Sure! Oh. All right. Let's go, boys. OK, I'll tell you how this thing is done. Be out there. This is where we're going. OK, there you go. Down, down, and then out. Yeah. Oh. All right. Can you drive it? Let's get that up. Okay, fellas, aim for that mountain of dirt straight ahead. I never saw so much messy money just in my whole life. And the best part is, you are the same as you are the <laughs> Don't mention it, Alec. That dump truck has a steel bed extender to keep rocks from falling on the driver's cab. Right again for 500 points and a trip to Disneyland. And I recognize that thing. It's another heavy-duty track haul. Amazing! We now have two winners for the Disneyland Dream Vacation. But can anyone tell me the name of the mechanical part that tilts the bucket up and down? Ah, time's up! It's called a tilt cylinder, and now I go to Disneyland! Yay for me! You're a crazy hard hat, Harry. Oh! Oh, watch this! When the truck bed is full, the track operator tap load with his bucket. Let the dump truck know it's okay to pull away. 
No way! That's cool! You know, dump trucks move too slow for me. You boys might have just moved up a little, do you? <laughs> There's another kind of dump truck. These are called 100 ton dump trucks. They have long, regular dump boxes and regular freight cars. Whoa! Check that out! That car actually pushing the head to start. I can do it! I'm a strong dump truck! I know I can do it! Uh, maybe me and my dump truck buddies can sing our favorite work song. Ready, boys? truck bath here too, Harry. Those dump trucks trash this street. They have special street sweepers to do the job instead, Max. I love to sweep. I love to sweep. Street to sweep. Sweep. Oh, sweeping so much fun. I get to turn my brushes round and round. Getting making the street clean and neat. La 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 la. La 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 la. You stop I just finished swimming there. I said, what do you think? Oh, someone's in the truck. Well, now I think it's time to see something really concrete. I don't know. What is it? I'm a concrete pump, friend. One of my family is using their own unit having to pump. It takes almost 15 minutes just to unfold my boom. With My truck are called outriggers. I use them for stability so I won't tip over when I'm pumping. Here comes a ready to mix concrete truck. It's about time because that's where I'm going to get my from, sister. Oh, just be going to put in that concrete into a rear humper. Watch my shoot come up. Ready? Aim. Concrete is made from sand, gravel, water, and cement. I mixed the concrete together while I was driving over here, simply by spinning the thick mixture in my colorful barrel-shaped drum. My drum never stops turning. So the concrete goes from the mix truck into the concrete. You got it, Max. Then the concrete worker pulls my snaking hose along the wooden mold and positions the hose exactly where he needs the concrete. He gives me a concrete of 70 cubic yards an hour. That's fast. Who are you waving to, Alex? That concrete man looks a red hard hat. He looks a little like a toy. Doesn't he, Matt? Hey, last I saw, he was charming snakes in Catman Dude. You're our only snake charmer? That's right. Wow, I don't think I can even hide it. When will the concrete on the new wall be dry, Mr. Pumper? It'll be hard enough to walk on in just four hours, but it takes almost 28 days for concrete to dry rock solid. There's another concrete truck, and it has a really long chute. Point to that, it doesn't require the big concrete pumper. A simple concrete truck with an extra long chute can get done. The direction and height of the chute from inside his cab. Chute! If you boys don't mind, I think I'll sit down and rest with some of my hard hat buddies over here. Harry, can we get a close up look at their machines while they're taking a break? Okay. Let's stay in your guy where I can see. Max, look at the side of this boat. Oh, that's big. These tractor treads are cool. Say that again. Not awkward. 
Discord driller, Alex. Auger driller. A U G E R. Oh, whatever. Give him that mini cleaning part. And watch what the workers hold. It's a steel pile I saw a while back, but a little shorter. Here, the ground men are letting the backhoe drop a pile into the hole. Then the backhoe bucket forward onto the pile and pushes it down even farther. Hey, a mini concrete pouring the concrete into a back. Here comes that back. In that support pile stronger and stable for the new building they're going to erect. The backhoes do What's that I hear? Impact! And don't forget to wipe off your boots first. I don't want it on the floor of mine. Good! Impact hammer is a tough guy. Now, let's see. The impact hammer is connected to a track. Take two men to attach the long pointed impact bit, which is made of super strong hardened steel. At the end of the day, that guy's brains must be pulverized, too. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet he gets rattled pretty good. A big impact, but you know, you're a messier way to break up rock. I'd like to see some real life blasting. Hot dog! Oh, yeah! Now, before any blasting can take place, these odd-looking machines called crawler drills bore small holes in the rock just wide enough for a stick of dynamite and a lightning agent to fit through. Between the dynamite is very important for the ground to drill to carefully chosen locations in the rock, which will allow for the most efficient blast. The closely watched drilling process begins. Okay, Alex, it's not dangerous until he attaches a wire to the top and sends an electrical current to the top. Right. But first, he drops the dynamite into the hole along with a special white blasting gel and packs it all down tight. Blasting is extremely dangerous. That's why they always handled by special experts. Lots of training before they conduct their first blast. It's these experts who decide how far the dynamite will be placed from each other and how much will be used. So nobody is going to find a few? Only in old western movies, Alex. Today, blame the The actual gun with electrical impulses that travel through those lights leading to the black thing. When everybody's at least 500 feet away, and the warning horn sounds... It's showtime! Oh, awesome! I've got to see that again! Yeah, please have it! Another... Five, four, three, two, one... Wait for the all-clear signal, and after the blast happens, you gotta clean up the mess. The front end are the last job, preparing the area for a new roadway. Some of this rock you see might even be ground up and used to stabilize the area of the road called the shoulder. As you can see, guys, it takes a lot of time and machinery to build just a few hundred feet of roadway. Hey, that was big equipment. No, 
Just saving the blast. Let's go! Now, who can tell me what this snail pace piece of road machinery is called? Looks like the snowman. But that's not a snow, it's a reclaimer. The machine adds white line to soil to make it hard as rock for the paver. Soil fault and lay down a road to be ready acting machine. Road reclaimer. Reclaimer has really tried to get And that strange machine has a metal tire in the front. Tire? That's my compacted drum. Not again. It's a girl. I'm Carla, the compactor, Sonny. My grandmother was called a steamroller, but compactor suits me better. You must well not, Carla. It's all muscle, Alex. But here's a little secret. My drum has a vibration inside, so I can compact soil using impact or percussion. Not just sheer weight. Wow, Carla, you're a cool cocker. Just doing my job, Alex. It's time to see a big wall. It looks like something from Star Wars. And it's being driven by Darth Vader. Oh, the pavement profiler. I could slow down my three tracks, eating up old asphalt. And spitting it out, my long conveyor belt, into bottom drop dumb trucks. It takes two people to control me. One on my back, and one on the ground. With my 264 tungsten carbide teeth, I can cut a path up to 16 feet wide and 15 inches deep. No one up me that I weigh 148 pounds. With a month way, my friend, the paver, steps in. His voice was kind of scary. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's always trying to scare little kids. Stick with me. I'm a paper tiger. Watch this. I'm gonna splash some wet concrete on that bossy guy over there. Got on his shirt of pants, too. Son. Okay, back. The wet concrete is poured into my heart. I pick it up and pull it into my huge spreader part. Or a dump truck and spreads the concrete in front of And then, away I go. That there's called a leading float finisher. I roadway. You know, I can even lay down a 30-inch slab of concrete want to. 50 feet long. And I'm always right behind you, Pava. I'm a curing machine. I straddle above the road surface while my two tanks spray out curing compound onto the new concrete. The curing compound protects and seals the stuff so we don't get any crap when the road dries. I hate. And I'm last, but definitely not least. I'm a texturing machine. It's my job to use my long comb to wrap up the new road surface so it won't be too smooth and slippery when vehicles drive over it. Those teeth cut 3 sixteenths of an inch into the fresh concrete. Just enough for skid resistance and rain drainage. It smells like tar around here. Look, there's why. You're no kind of asphalt concrete paper. With a very big difference. The dump truck very hot asphalt into the hopper of the discharge conveyor belt. It doesn't look so hot. It is my friend. In the dump truck at the hot mix plant, it's 325 degrees. <laughs> Conveyor belt pours the asphalt into the roadway in straight in piles called windrow. That's called a windrow asphalt paper. <laughs> and I bet that corks the asphalt pile in front of you. And then I drive right over it, packing it down into a smooth, level surface. Pretty soon, it's what you kickball players call blacktop on a good, solid starter surface that that blacktop will last up to eight years, as old as you are, Max. Hey, that guy's putting his initials in the pavement. 
<laughs> nah, he's just testing the depth of the surface with the pointed dipstick, Alex. Between two to four inches, I ain't no damn thing. Yeah, did you point to note 93% of the roads in this country are made from asphalt? It's much cheaper to lay down a blacktop surface than one from concrete. So, except for airport runways and interstate highways that need concrete to support the way the Jack American roadways are basically paved with thousands of miles of asphalt. <laughs> Thank you, me, of course. Coming through. Machines on road. How do you think a road closer like me gets to my job? Well, I'll tell you. We use low battery. Some of these trailers run and can carry 126 tons of heavy equipment. They ride just 6 to 12 inches off the ground, making it easy for big beasts like me to climb aboard. Try to back and relax while the trailer and truck does all the work. Uh, nothing like a free. Even the giant profile travels in this kind of style. Wait a second. Why did you tell me it's an asphalt truck? I told you back a load is reversible. Seems like they'll try just anything once. I guess no one else wanted to get too close to that super hot asphalt. Besides, they'd have a big twerk like this. Oh, cool! An Alex sized compactor. Be quiet, forklift. Well, Max, I learned a lot today. I'm going to repair it real ground. Thought you might like to see how clever engineers and giant machines build roadways below the surface. Watch. Is it going to dig a tunnel? How smart are you, Alex? Huge and heavy, it pushes against rock and dirt from behind it, while dozens of sharp spinning blades turn slowly round and have the same name as a tiny little animal that digs tunnels all day long. Any guesses? A rabbit? Right. Think really small with bad eyes. Oh no! Gigantic tunnel makers hold. Gigantic mole! 35 feet across! Mr. Mole, I'm ready to prove! I am through! Look how small these workers are compared to me! Of course, my sharp mole teeth occurred. The debris is transported by moving conveyor belt to the center of my belly to make the train. Then it's up to the surface by special elevators. Where the debris is loaded for proper disposal. It's nice to be above ground again. I was getting a little close down there. We're really above ground now. From a feet below to 30 feet in the air, thanks to a bucket truck. Hmm, looks like our friend is installing new traffic lights at that intersection. They've been fixing the phone lines on our block all week with bucket trucks. I heard bucket workers calling his truck a cherry picker. Yep. These tall telescoping bucket trucks, or cherry pickers, are used for everything from repairing electrical cables to trimming the branches of big trees. Have a bucket truck rescue operation. Like when they see Jake from falling off our new We thought so. The bucket man is coming down now. He controls the upward and downward movement from inside the bucket. Once he's on the ground, he'll pull up those stabilizer legs. And off he goes to repair more traffic lights. Now who wants to see a big crawler crane lift a big steel girder? I do!
You saw crawler cranes like this one earlier. At the top of the boom engine, and there was another 180 feet of boom below that. Without breaking a sweat, this crane can lift more than 250 tons. Wow, that's like three of those huge profiler machines at one time. Now the workers use a sturdy grapple hook or a rod on the end of the crane cable to secure the girder for lifting. Should I do the crane up? Hey, mister, put on your hat. Hey, you. I think he's concentrating on easing that girder into place, Alex. Find him about his hard hat later. Hey, more men in buckets! The men are using me to inspect and repair the underside of that bridge. Another name for a man lift is a self-propelled aerial work platform. Show off! If you don't mind, I'd like to show off a bit too. I can climb to a height of 60 feet in just 20 seconds. seconds. The workers can actually drive into the air to control their platform. Okay, down I go. Each section of my boob is like... I'm getting hungry. Is that right? Sure, there's a lunch wagon on the construction site. The workers buy their coffee, donuts, and snacks. Look, that nice lady's waving to us. I wonder if I can have a bite of her sandwich. Harry, can we go see that other crane on top of the bridge? Oh, yeah. Looks like they're laying down long steel support rods. Hear that beeping sound? It's a warp you know the crane is kicking up in your direction. All construction equipment even noise when they shift into reverse gear. What kind of crane is that? Remember what those are called? The crane The hydraulic feet actually lift the wheels of the crane 12 inches off the ground. Once the ground men attach the hoisting hook to the load, the crane operator takes so 35 tons. That's only a seven baller crane. You calling me a Look, that crawler crane might be a little stronger than I am. But I can get into small spaces the crawler would never think of squeezing into. And my boom has three extensions that feed from the that. I tell you, I get no respect around here. I break my boom all day, lifting and lugging, lifting and lugging. Okay, okay, sorry. If it weren't for me, the highway would never get built. Uh, like we're just finishing up over here, boys. Let me move on to the wagon. Look at them all. That's a very unusual piece of a call, a barrier mover, Alex. It sucks up those concrete barriers and shifts them from lane to lane, helping to keep traffic running. So wicked. Those concrete barriers are hooked up securely together by a metal pit that pull along at nearly 10 miles per hour. Looks like some of the workers are ready to pack it in for the day. Some of the big machines, like the front loader, help the tired construction workers carry their heavy storage area for the night. Where is it going now? After all the smaller equipment is put away, 
driven to a central location in the workyard where they'll be refueled and made ready for the early morning work shift. What do we see next, Terry? What do you see next, Max? Is your own friend get you boys home before your mom and dad start worrying. Oh, please, oh, please Harry. Harry. Just, just one, one more. more. Well, all right. Just one. Let's see if I can snap up something really exciting. Hang on, boys. We're out of here. Nearly blunt. Oh, uh, sorry about that, guys. I'm still a little rusty on my time travel. Um, uh, which one of those monster machines were your favorites? I like the driveway paver and that humongous dump truck. Dad would say if I pulled into the driveway in one of those. <laughs> I like, I like the swarming concrete mixture, the baby loader, and that weird barrier move. Personally, I like that noisy pile driver. Hey, did I tell you guys about my first construction job? No. I'm working for this guy named Pharaoh, building these pointy things called the Great Pyramids. Well, I had to stack these stones on top of it, but no one could figure out how to do it. Well, this was easy. So I went over to Pharaoh and I told him that the best. today was hard on Harry, huh? All that flying around and talking to those monsters. You know, I don't think Mom and Dad think this about Harry. Yeah, sometimes grown-ups are kind of weird. all about the cool magic stuff that happens to you, and they just stare at you like you're crazy. But it happens. Real. What the best part? What's that? <laughs> We've got a whole bunch of wishes left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.